Good evening, Friday, the 29th of October, episode 73 of Bahamas. Can you believe it or not? We've got Gaz joining us from his holiday home in Spain, in Mahaka, in Spain. He's going to be uh, joining us very shortly to do the news bits. Then coming up at 8.15, we've got Wells' very own Carl Blake from Blake's Grooming. He's going to be joining us in the house talking all things, not doing exhibitions this year and uh, opening his new salon up. And then we've got Sam Bennett joining us, who's head of sales for Nearcut, and uh, we're getting insight into what's happening with Nearcut. All on episode 73, in conjunction with Wall UK and the British Barbers Association. Without further ado, hola to the main gringo himself, for live from Spain, Mr Gary Machin. Well, thank you very much, Mr Simon Shaw. Buenas noches, everybody out there. This is Gary Machin speaking from Espanol. Uh, first, before we go, um, Thanks to uh, Parlous Barbers, Barbershop of the Year, Rico and all the team, and Reese Whitehouse from Hintzy's Barbers for the last week's show. Over 50,000 views now from last week's show. I know we've, we've had two or three shows quite close together, so over the three shows, I think we are touching about 150,000, so thank you very much for that. Uh, been a fantastic week for me, mate. What's it been like for you? <laughs> well, uh, I'm just, it, it, it's cold. Uh, clocks go back this weekend, so everybody's going to be getting up when it's dark. Everybody's going to be going to get in when it's dark. So I think, and, I, and I'm a seriously serious message here. I think that the message for me is that, you know, you've got to look at everybody's mental well being because everybody's already saying, oh, we're going to get depressed. You know, I was on a meeting at four o'clock at work, and it's like, oh, clocks go back. We're all going to go to work when it's that. We're coming back when it's that. I think this year, more than any in the crap year that we had last year and some of the people who suffered really bad last year with it, I think it's really important that we do everything possible to condition yourselves and to get in real positive frame of mind for the dark mornings and the dark nights and try to get as well beans up. So hopefully we can shed a bit of light with some stuff. Maybe daily vlogs of you guys when you're walking your dog outside your local pub that's closed but you've still got some cans in your pocket you dirty <laughs> bastard hey anyway what are you drinking i've got a uh una canye here some small beer so a little little beer for you what are you drinking tonight i'm drinking liquid valium you're not on the hard stuff again i'm on a uh a cruise, camp, a cruise campo tonight a little special. Oh, I like that. do you know what though when i'm in spain i can drink any lager really at any time as well. I'm not an alcoholic, but I've got to say when I'm in Spain, there's something about the air that, you know, if I sat down into a coffee bar, I'd have a beer. A bacon sandwich, go on then, I'll have. <laughs> One time I get off a bar. <laughs> well, it, it, the thing is, you see, when, when you've got that, I don't know, that holiday feeling, especially if you only have a small beer, so if you, if you ask for a canya, which is a small beer or a picanha, it, it doesn't seem as bad, does it? You know, having a full pint. But if you sneak a little beer like that in and, you know, you just go, oh, when can you puff a ball? It doesn't seem so bad, does it, for, for, for having a little beer? But when, you have, when you're having about 12 or 18 beers a day, it starts being, being a little problem then, doesn't it? So, I want to say, guys, who are you trying to convince here that you're on small <laughs> He's on small beers, but he has 27 a day. <laughs> Ridiculous behaviour, absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's nice out there, and the weather's nice, and I'm sure you're thinking about everybody um, over here. Um, good week, I'm sure everybody um, has had a, a good week. I hope you've all been nice and busy. Half term in most places, so I would imagine today and tomorrow would be packed out for most people who are getting everybody back in ready for school and ready for that big push towards the Christmas uh, all it is now because I think people are one payday away out from the Christmas shopping, and um, I think it's going to be exciting times for everybody that we, we, we've got. But we're not in the position that we were last year. Well, it's night and day, isn't it, compared to where we were? A bit important is to keep the things nice and safe. I have to say, if you was at Salon, you'll have seen all wall staff while we masks on stage, you'll have seen our sales area with uh, Perspex, purpose built Perspex. Protective barrier for our staff and touch wood that everybody's come back uh, out of 20,000 visitors and everybody's come back so far with no no um, viruses and no uh, COVID. 
um, no. which is really good. So it just shows I, you extra protection. I, I, think, I think if you do things right, people appreciate it. It improves confidence and everything else. But no matter what you do, and I mean, we do everything we possibly can. Uh, and we've had really good feedback from clients, um, staff as well, especially. And you know what? This last week, it's sod's law that I've come away because I've got. I had a few jobs to do over here as well. I've come away and everything's fell apart at work from a, not not actually the lads catching uh, COVID, but family. How many children? You know, kids. Uh, the messies, everything, all sorts of people. I seem to be, I, 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 I go uh, have my blood pressure done. And, you know, you know, when you go to a Wellman clinic, you have your checkup at a, at a certain age. I had my blood pressure done, brilliant, everything's fine, everything's tickety boo. But he couldn't, he hadn't got any nurses to give me for take bloods for me. He, the doctor actually took the bloods and he said, I think they got 22 doctors in that particular doctors and not a single nurse between them because either they got COVID. Or the kids had got COVID, so they had to be off anyway. And I think this is the, the sign of the times where we're not particularly having a lot of cases of infection in the shop, but it's the, it's the add-ons. It's the, um, you know, the, the wives, the girlfriends, the partners, uh, the kids having it. And if they haven't been double jabbed, especially with younger staff, then they have to isolate. I mean, if you're double jabbed, you don't have to isolate. You carry on going work as normal, but it still seems a bit weird to me when you've got positive cases at home and you're still going where, but, you know, those are the rules now. But we've had a couple of senior members of staff go off because, you know, they're, they're just due for the second jab uh, and they've had to isolate now. And it's caused absolute havoc at work this week. And with me being away, I can't do anything about it either. So it's uh, you know the, we're not out the trees yet and it's still affecting businesses i know we've had a great budget you know from our point of view and you know things are, are looking good the government are looking to spend um it's there is still hurdles to be to be jumped out there still from business owners and trading as well there is and i think you know there's a big, big myth about i saw it selling a lot and especially getting it out of excel and I'm just speaking to a colleague of mine, Grant, uh, uh, who has got Pab All Sale and, and the milkshake distributor in the UK, just come back from Italy. And he said, every restaurant you went into, you had to have masks on. You've got to show your passport, your COVID passport for double jab. So here, here it goes. This is my take on it. You know, it depends on your company that you work for. If you're going out and about and you're, in, and you're on certain things that you can be said if you if you to protect you we're going into a venue where there's going to be ten thousand people you're not double jab so you'll not be doing this event because you know we want to protect you um i understand people sometimes have said oh i'm not having a jab it's not being tested properly but my mum's just had it last 10 days and you know she's not been very well she's 72 and i believe if she wouldn't have had her jabs what the jabs do is help to cushion the blow of covid she's been really ill for uh, not hospitalized but really ill for 10 days like a real bad cold, but I dread to think if she'd not had the vaccinations, how she would have would have coped with that. So my view to all of this is just, you know, wherever possible, do the right thing. And um, hopefully we can all make sure we stay open and uh, just keep practicing good practices, like you've said, guys. But it is a, still a vital bastard thing, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it, it, it's hard. You know, we've been talking to local barbers and lo local business owners where I am and you know, they're finding the same thing. It's affecting productivity and, and everything else going on. Big shout out to all the guys who are usually watching. So Mark Walters, we've got Pivot Point, uh, which is, uh, I just bring up because we met the young lady who's behind the Pivot Point logo as well. So good evening to you as well. Spanish love to everybody out there. Uh, Andy Willis and all the usual serial. Uh, we've got all our usual top fans that are watching. Uh, good evening and welcome from a sunny Spain and, you know, hope you finished work and you're not actually still at work. So I hope you're having, joining us for a beer. Anybody want to ask any questions tonight, get on our uh, feed, share, please, with everybody you possibly can. And you know all our socials by now. You've got Mr. Simon Shawwall, the British Barber for me and BritishBarbers.com. So, hey, BarbersArms.co.uk. So, what about the guests tonight then, Simon? Who have we got on tonight? 
Uh, we've got Carl Blake coming on, which would be really good. I want to get a different insight from Carl, which would be a tricky conversation. Obviously, I didn't use him for Salon. First Salon he's not done for probably 10, 15 years. Um, he knows the reasons why. And uh, we, um, you know, we want to speak to him about that. We've got uh, Sam on. I know Sam's been sharing it. He's looking forward to coming on, head of near cut sales. Um, just to reiterate some of those social media sites as well. Uh, email is uh, barbersarms at the British Barber.com. Our website is the bar, uh, sorry, I'm as bad as gas, the barbersarms.co.uk. Instagram, Sammy Shawwall, Gaz is the British Barber, and Barbers on Scott Arms sends us Instagram accounts. Um, uh, Gary, just to reiterate as well, thanks to all our top fans. It was great at selling. I know we've said it great at selling people coming up and saying, you know, what you guys provided over. That first lockdown in particularly. You know, I look back at it, guys, as well. I don't know if you've ever seen the cartoon character podcast of me and yeah. guys. Steve and Bean were saying how, how good it was. Have a look at that, see what you think. Put some comments on about um, what you thought of mine and Gaz's cartoon characters. I think mine needs slimming down a bit. Um, so <laughs> I, I think, you know, oh, looking at all, all the people that follow us. And then I'll look back at some of the last episodes. And we had... We had Anna Elliott on from China. Uh, we had uh, Jack on in Norway. We're having people on who had reopened back up when everybody in, in the UK were locked down. And you look back at those first 25 episodes and they were golden. They will capture what were happening in the UK in our industry for decades to come. What happened in the barbering and Anderson industry in lockdown? Well, just go back to any episode between one and maybe 25, 35. And it'll really capture some great interviews and uh, good stuff that's happening. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. It was a snapshot, wasn't it? It was a snapshot in a time, you know, and we're just, just mention our top guests as well. Sorry, Al, uh, well done for having, I think you've won Barbershop of the uh, the county or some, wherever you are in the world. I think you're down south. Um, so, south. well done to you as well. Well done, Cheryl. Congratulations. Every award is a winner, you know. You still got to enter. You still got to hit the grade and whatever you win. Um, so congratulations! Nice to be recognised. So uh, giving away free beer now. Cheers down, down there, and uh, everybody has a free beer tomorrow in the shop. So get down to she's down area. Like, oh, area, Devon area. I saw her and her partner Sam at salon. We came backstage to say hello, and I know she was doing some bits for Bernice on Fab, and I know she did some bits, I think, on the Modern Barber. And I know she entered out our competition. So well done, Sherelle. Great effort. You're obviously putting your name out there. You're grafting. You're having a go at it. Some you'll win. Some you'll not. But I'll tell you what, if you never enter, you'll never win. And you you never you never know. You'll never lose. So just just keep doing what you're doing. Well done, mate. Congratulations to you and uh, Sam. I think she's got the best uh, best view in, in the country as well at, uh, at, when she's uh, wherever she's living and working as well. She, she's always posting lovely, lovely sea view so really jealous there Serial and and yes I met you at, at uh, bumped into you with you and your partner at, at Salon so lovely to see you and congratulations again so we've got a packed show for you we've got some great show, great uh, guests coming up in the coming future as well anybody that needs any information or if they want to ask any questions especially for our guests tonight our guests are going to be uh, here for us and we're going to be asking them whatever you want some are going to be questions they don't particularly like some are going to be awkward some are going to be great to see and celebrate their careers uh, we've got near cut on so if anybody's thinking or wanting to take on a booking app here's your time to ask all the all the necessary questions we're going to ask him some questions anyway um, and sam's going to give us all the answers hopefully so i think we've on as well, guys, just to let everybody know, we uh, from next week we'll have a new little feature which will be um, we're going to do some product reviews. So, we've yep. got 34 products so far that's come in. Some products you'll have heard of, some BBA products, uh, we've got some Captain Fawcett products, and we've got some homage uh, products as well, which are beautiful, by the way, it's really nice. So, we'll be able to do some reviews as well, um, of different companies and tell you what we think about some of your products that you've got. Yeah, and that's happening. We're going to have a special slot every week now. So, as Simon's just said, so look here for, for all the reviews. Hey, by the way, where's your where's your uniform? I've I bought mine all the way all the way all the way to Spain. Extra baggage for get it in. Where, where, where is Guys, it? I'm 
flared up. It's so cold here. <laughs> really cold. Really cold. Anyway, uh, in the car park, pulling up, he's probably got a, a, a nice old classic. I know he likes his, his classic Beamers and his classic Mercedes uh, over the years. Um, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> So you guys can't see this, but we see feeds off people putting messages on. I'm not a cheap bastard. Um, as, you, as, you start, as you get older, you, I don't know if anybody said, but same, hands, nose and feet cold, unless there's any doctors watching tell me some kind of medical form here. Uh, but yes, our, our first guest, a young man who's worked with me for maybe 14, 15 years. We'll find out exactly how long he's worked with us. Um, but uh, done really well with Wall over his career. Opening up um, on the um, southwest coast over in Brighton. He's got two sounds called Blake's Grooming, um, but he's had a great career with Wall as well. So, without further ado, please welcome to the Barber's Arms. He came on as a local hero last year, but as a full main guest here tonight on Barber's Arms, the one and only. Very ill. I had a lot of cold this week. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Carl Blake. Carl, turn you. You're on You're mute. mute. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we got you now, mate. Good evening, guys. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you on, mate. And it was even better pleasure to see you in the flesh at Salon finally after a, a long layoff of, of not actually meeting up, mate. How are you keeping anyway? I'm, I'm, I'm very well in general. Been very unwell this week, unfortunately. Um, I've had to drag myself out of bed this, this, this afternoon just to be here this evening. Suffering with flu, but I should have gone and got the flu jab, so it's my own fault. Well, you're in that age category now as well, where you'll get it free of charge and as often as you want, because you, you, you're in that. Are you, a, you, you, are you past the OYE yet, OYE 5 -0? I am, I am, only just. Not as far past it as you. Yeah. Well, no, but as I say, I class myself as a really nice, fine Malbec coming from some kind of distillery in Chile or Argentina. Um, that gets better as you get older. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The, the trouble is, is, we get better as we get older. I don't know about uh, health-wise, though, but, you know, it's... Um, I don't know about you, Blakey. It's, uh, I feel the aches and pains in the morning now, anyway, so... But we keep we keep taking the tablets, mate. Anyway, uh, you've got some news for us. You've, you've recently opened a new shop. I mean, you took on the lease beginning of the year. Um, this is your second location, mate, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. I hadn't actually planned on opening a, a new shop in the middle of lockdown, but uh, along came the shop that I wanted originally before I took on my first shop. And uh, it was too, too, uh, it, I'd be crazy not to take it up. So uh, I spent most of my lockdown building and putting together my new shop. So, um, yeah, and it's, it's up and running, been going since, uh, been open since April. Uh, the same as the rest of us, opened on the 12th of April um, as soon as we could, and, and it's been going great guns ever since. I think we'd, before we finish tonight, Carl, would like to get our viewers to have a, a look round, and it's always That's good cool. to see other people so on, so we'll have a look. I, I think I mentioned it in week, and I won't normally speak to a guest and tell them any questions, and there's some questions here that you're not normally going to ask you, but we had spoke about a, a bit of a topic that... So we'll cut straight to it, Carl. Uh, Carl, how long have you been working with Wall now? This will be my 16th year. 16th year. So, guys, if you were at Salon International, you know that, that a lot of the presenters were not familiar with Wall. They are on social media, and some of you have seen it pass, but there was no Michael Damiano, there was no Fab, there was no Carl Blake, and so many people come up to it. Have you come from the team? It's like, Barbara's so, like, cutthroat it's like i know part of the pun but they are so like harsh it's like no and so just to clear this up because i had lots of people speak to me about this and say have you got rid of them blah 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 carl blake michael damiano five jake lansley anybody who didn't do selling international there was a reason behind that was we were coming into a new show for uh, people who have just joined the industry as well so we had lots of people that had never been to selling before We've got a brand new product launch. And one of the things we wanted to do was to the we wanted to change the, the post that we wanted to change the delivery people just on this new product for a for a start back fresh. If it works well, trust me, it's everybody else's idea. If it didn't work, it'll come all back to me. 
Um, and it kind of did, did, did get that message across. But, Carl, I want to ask you the question. So you've had 16 years with us, and there's not probably anybody in this industry that's done that long with one product, barring me. A lot of them, they go work for that company for three years, then they're going somewhere else, then they're going somewhere else. We've seen it all before. Um, so I'm going to ask you the question is, you got the phone call off me to say you, you, you weren't doing salon. We explained, and hopefully I, I did it in a, you know, a good way so you, you didn't feel too too bad about not doing it. You've got the reasons. But how do you deal with it, first question? How do you deal with that process? Uh, and secondly, when you came to salon, you know, kind of like, because I, I spoke to Michael, I spoke to Five about, you know, when they see people on stage and they weren't on stage, how, how it makes people feel. How did you feel at that point as well? Um, yeah, so so first of all, it's, I guess, like you said, it's important to mention that you and I did have a brief chat about this um, in, in the week. Um, and I've ju- I have jotted a few things down. Um, for me, more the, how I deal with it, I don't need to deal with it, first and foremost. And this is why. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's a privilege to work on a stage. Okay, if you're going to whatever company you're working for, as far as I'm concerned, it's a privilege to work on your stage. And as far as I'm concerned, working on a stage shouldn't define your career. It should enhance your career. It shouldn't be the reason that you want to get better, the reason that you want to be more known or anything like that. Uh, You know, I work on the stage. Hopefully, by me being on a stage working for a while, as I have done for 16 years, I can by doing that, I can inspire people to buy the products maybe try a different technique, whatever it be. That's that's the reason I'm there. I'm not there for me. I'm there for the people that are in the crowd and I'm there for a while as, as, a, uh, as somebody who works for a while. So that, there's, 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 but as far as I'm concerned, if I don't get picked or chosen to work on a stage, then it's, it, I don't have to deal with it. It's just the way it is. It's not, it's, it's not um, having worked on stages all around the world for a while, over the 16 years that I've done, it's not something that I have to really even think about. As far as being at, at Salon International, do you know what? It was just great to be at the at the exhibition and see everybody there, see all the people there, see all the enthusiasm for it again. We've had a long, long time out and away from the business. So it was just great to see that. Yes, absolutely. It's... it's um, when, when you see the guys that I've worked alongside up on stage and I'm not up on stage, then all I want to do is be up on stage. But that's not that's not begrudging the people that are, that are there. It's just my own feeling that I would like to be on that stage. It's not, um, it's, there's no, uh, there's no animosity or there's no, there's none of that that goes on with me at all because it's a privilege to be on the stage when I am on the stage. I think this is good for young presenters, you know, because sometimes you've done bits and then we know how we do our contracts, guys, and everybody who's listening to it's such a different ball game at Walt to some of these companies. Like, And I have to say this, and I'm going to say whether it pleases you or not. When I walk around and I watch Instagrams and I'm at Salon and I see barbers going from there to there to there to there, and I hear this, it drives me fucking mad. I've just come off, and I can't mention the company because it wouldn't do them dis- disrespect, so I'm not going to do that. But I-, I hear these words. I've just come off that stage. I've just come off that stage. And I walk round and I look at where they say they've worked. It's not a fucking stage. No. No. It's a chair in a shell scheme stand. Yeah. There were stages there. Let me tell you all there were. Modern Barber, H.J. and Schwarzkopf, Fellowship and Wall. They're stages. The rest of them aren't stages. Yeah, they're just stages. And, 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 and be honest with yourself. You know, I've gone and done some demonstrations on their stand. I'll, I'll wear that all day long. I can't wear this. I've just come off stage. It's not a fucking stage. Come on, please. Stop yeah. it. <laughs> Stop it. You're, fu- you're funny in yourselves. You're funny in yourselves. But, but anyway, getting off that, and you, you know, now, he, now he's said his little piece, Blakey. So, what have you? What have been your highlights? And you know, and what what would you give? What experience would you take from? Well, how is how has it enhanced your career, doing what you've done? Well, I, I think it's uh, enhanced my profile within the industry for sure. Um, but uh, as I, I've I've written, it's funny, funny enough, I've written something down here 
and I, I, what I've written down is I think people have it slightly wrong, um, the wrong way round. That that to be if you're going to be on stage, it's not to gain personal success. That you shouldn't be trying to get on stage to become more successful. Actually, when people work on stage, or even if they work on a stand somewhere, an exhibition, then what's happening is the reason they're working on that stand is because they've already become certainly uh, to a certain extent a certain level of success otherwise they wouldn't be there so therefore if you're going to move on and you're going to work on a stage or whatever that shouldn't be the reason why you're there the reason why you're there is because of what you're doing in your in your your working life other than just working on a stage or working on a stand that's the way i see it anyway um and you know wow has definitely been a massive massive part of my career 16 years at wow um, and the, the enhancements have, have come, obviously, profile-wise, but more just spending time with such, you know, such a, a, a great company, uh, all the advice that Simon's given me over the years, um, being able to stand up in front of people and talk to hundreds of people. I, I've done shows in, in Thailand and in Hong Kong and just on my own, um, you know, with four or 500 people in the audience and that kind of thing. Being able to do that, I would never have been able to do that before. So there, I can, there's, there's certain parts of being uh, working for well, for 16 years that has massively enhanced my career and my shots that I have now, uh, the, the way that my staff are with me. Um, you know, it's just 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 having that that um, that name within the industry, really. I guess. And what what would you? You know what were the highlights? What 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 did you uh, what did you take from it as well? I mean, for any young young uh, budding stage, you know, wants to be on stage, what what would you say? What would you say to them? Well, anybody that wants to work on a stage, anybody. The highlights for me, undoubtedly, are Salon International, because you have a big team with you, um, you're working on a on, on the biggest barbering stage. Uh, I've done it for 15 years, and it's just incredible working on that stage. Um, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that obviously people don't really know about and don't really realise the amount of work that goes into it. But, you know, we're just a tiny, tiny little cog on a, on, on, in a massive machine when, when, Salon, when uh, Wild comes to Salon International, and it's amazing to be part of that. So that's, without doubt, the, the, the highlights for me over the years. I've done my trips abroad and that kind of thing, and it's been great. But um, I think as far as somebody young and, and aspiring to, to work on stage, then just work hard, put your work out there, and make sure that you, you go to the right places, the right exhibitions, speak to the right people, start, at, at, in, as Simon said earlier, start on a stand and see if you can work your way up. Um, you know, I think it's very, very different these days. I think people rely so much on social media and Photoshop work and that kind of thing. I think it's more important just to be completely honest and completely straight up as to what level you are. Hey, listen, I, I you know, what I've said to you guys as well, um, and there were loads of parts of me as I've, as I've left Salon that thinks, you know, I've changed things again. You know, we've got such a great team here that you can pick different teams for different events, but... Um, you've been ultimate professional, haven't you? You've had a great 16 years so far, and may, long may it continue, you know. Um, if you come to us, or, and if uh, Alan B came to us, or, or Sam and said, Look, I've, I've done as much as I can now, well, we'll have that conversation. But there's been none of that conversations with anybody, you, you ultimate professional. Always looks immaculate, guys, on stage. Um, <laughs> looks a bit right. older now than me. Um, he's overtook me. Um, <laughs> but, Blakey, one other question I've got for you there is. So you've, you've, you've travelled extensively for us a lot. So what's the best place you've travelled for and a funny story coming from those places? Because if you can leave the curving when you were in Hong Kong and China and, and Thailand for about six weeks and you had a, you got mistaken one night with something you bought and it didn't turn out to what it, you thought it was going to be, uh, leave that story out. <laughs> Marion, that tell us a funny story. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real boy. <laughs> Go on, Carl. Coffee note. Do you know? Do you know what? One of the funniest things that I did was was I worked for a company from Denmark, and uh, I, I flew into Crete. And this company, this particular company, they do a, like a a, a a summer 
a summer thing where they take a lot of their, they're a wholesale company and they take a lot of their customers to, to creep for a week. And they do, um, they do demonstrations in the morning and then everybody sits and, and suns themselves in the afternoon. So I was over in Creek for three, four days and it was, it was, it was great. But I didn't, what I didn't realise is that, that I was going to be doing the, the demonstrations that I was doing just, just for the one, for the first day. And uh, my backdrop was the swimming pool and uh, the, the, my audience was 100 women all sat there in bikinis watching me sitting on the on the on the on this bank of grass in front of the swimming pool and i'm trying to concentrate doing doing, doing my demonstrations and i've literally got a hundred women now let's 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 clarify this they weren't all fantastic looking looking but some of them were but I've, you know it was what an amazing thing to be doing uh, it was uh, very very difficult to keep concentration that day let's say that <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, fantastic. Um, going off from the stage work now, Carl, and we're going back to, you know, we're, we're salon owners and we, I know the trials and tribulations you have and, you know, the hardship trap. What was it like opening a brand new barbershop coming out of lockdown, staffing it and, and how's it doing at the moment? What was that experience like? Yeah, so uh, as I said, I mentioned briefly earlier, um, I hadn't planned on opening a new shop at all. Um, I was I had been looking for a new shop for my second shop. Uh, first shop having been open four years now and is, is going great guns. Um, but I hadn't been looking for a second shop at all. Uh, the, the shop that I the, my second shop came along because it was just it was actually a shop that I wanted before I took on my first shop four years ago. And I'd said to the lady who owns the premises, please, this is my number. Let me know when it becomes available, and of course, it became available uh, in lockdown because the guy who was in here before, well, it wasn't a barber's. Um, he, he, uh, he, he, unfortunately, his business went down due to lockdown. So I took the business on and I just thought, you know what, you've got to go for it. Um, and uh, one of the things that I do is I, I run my businesses in a way where I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm risk averse. No, no. My businesses could run at 50% uh, capacity and they'd still be making money. I don't tend to put it in, put my businesses into a position where I have to be taking 100%. So I did have a little bit of money in the bank so that I could put, put the business together, put the furniture in. And I, of course, I had plenty of time to put it all together and to, to paint and to... Oh, hello, have we gone? No, I had plenty of time to put the shop together because obviously we were in lockdown. So uh, apart from drinking red wine with my mates in the evening, in the daytime, I was, uh, I was, um, uh, yeah, putting the shop together. And, and how's that? Saw you. Sorry, and how's that gone? You know, what what kind of success have you had there? Is it is it doing all right? Well, well, interestingly enough, the reason I wanted the shop that I'm in currently right now. Uh, my new shop is because I knew that it would hit the ground running because it's in an area that's very well populated, but there isn't a barber's. Uh, it's in it's in a village location, but there's lots of other villages around that there is still no barber's. So I've got probably about a, a, a I don't know maybe a ten mile radius, uh, certainly in one direction where there's no barber's, uh, no barber shops at all. In the other direction, there's a few more, but it's basically hit the ground running. So I'm very very pleased with the with the success so far. But just to let everybody know as well that Carl has like a, a, a version of OCD like I do as well. So everything has to be immaculate. Everything has to be on point. If you don't do that, if, if you can't do it, you don't do it. You sh He's the only kid I've met that when you go to like an exhibition or you travel with him, same as me, everything's lined up in his hotel room, shoes are polished. It's like a military operation. Um, so that's I would expect when we have a look around his salon, it, it looks really cool. I'm seeing a, a real nice big steel beam behind us, but we'll have a look around in a minute. Uh, Blakey, one one last thing here. I uh, just want to ask you before we have a look around your shop. Well, please. So looking at two shops now, looking at continuing to do some education with us and, and doing bits and pieces still in your war role. What's kind of the next chapter for you as, as an individual? Would you expand the Blake's grooming? Uh, yeah, so, so, so absolutely, I want to expand the Blake's grooming. Um, I'm trying to build a brand. Um, 
plans really to I have a, a, one of my closest friends is my financial advisor and also my accountant as well. So um, between myself and him, we're looking at, um, at building a brand, really. Um, you know, much like, say, Sam Campagna has, has done himself and so on and so forth. So we're building a brand and I have uh, family members. My daughter is quite heavily, she's involved now, uh, my older daughter. Um, so yeah, we're just building a brand and, and there's plans maybe next year. I hope, I'm hoping to open a third shop. Um, and of course, now, now, now that I'm up and running properly, I'm looking at buying uh, freehold properties as well. Um, Excellent. Yeah, because that will be capital in the future. So that's, that's really what it's all about. Now, I know you've had a, a tough cold this week. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it. You sound just a, just normal, it's normal cold. But... It's a fever. Oh. Um, so, are you going to be working tomorrow, or are you still feeling I'm the? Back in, the... I'm back in work tomorrow. I've been off. I've been off for a few days, and I'm back in work tomorrow. So, it should, I'll be fine tomorrow. Good night's sleep, and then yeah, I'll be good. Can we have a look round? I'm dying to have a look round. I've not seen this shot. I've seen there's some pictures on the outside, but we haven't seen the inside. So, you... work. let's have a look. How do you how do you turn it round? I don't even know how you do that. Uh, sideways, turn your camera sideways for us. Oh, no, I've got it. All right. Yeah, so this, 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 this is the new shop. Um, well, that's nice. And uh, obviously, uh, I like my old old style furniture, nice little dresser there with everything on it. What products are the Carl? So we've got obviously the wild products here as well. Um, yeah. We've got some uh, Crazy Ball as well, which is the main products that we use, and uh, the Silhouette Hairspray. Okay. Nice. I love the uh, the light. Yeah. And then, yeah, just uh, same mirrors as the other shop. I know you guys have seen. This is the most important bit, of course. Oh, look at that, Gaz. None of this shit that you fetch on with. They've got odd <laughs> Andy, some fabulous bit. Look at that. Perfect. All wall. Love it. We've got the wild, wild bands up. They, they, they don't go. They don't come up very often. And then this is um, just a little bit of a uh, bit of motorcycle. Oh, wow. So yeah, um, that's actually all uh, MOT'd and uh, insured. So I do use it. So yeah, you know the, the uh, I like having the orthopedic mats as well. Just uh, keeps the staff nice and comfortable. Do they help? Yes. Do you have them, Gary? Do you know what? I don't, only because I keep tripping over them. Can't fit my feet. I'm, I'm not used to shuffling. I, I've got the, the barber shuffle, and I, I keep, the honestly... Barber shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I fell out. I, I, I've nearly had a couple of accidents with them. We've got them in one of the shops. My dad uses them. He he, he, he swears by them, but I'm, uh, I'm, I don't think I'm of that age yet where I need them yet. So it's... Uh, it, but I've yeah, needed them for years. A, a lot, a lot of people swear by them. And they actually, you know, the, a lo I know loads and loads of people that actually use them, but I, I just can't get used to it. I just keep tripping over them, so I don't. How, how many? I, I don't want one foot tall, so I'd feel good behind chair. It make me feel a bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you need the you, you, you wear your Cubans, don't you? If you went back to the salon, you'd have to be wearing Cuban heels now. You would. Oh, I don't know, but if any, anybody's been on Instagram today, have a look at the post that Johnny Barber put on from Barber Barber. He's put his new boots on, which look <laughs> like, you know, when you see them, like, in the old working men's club, the little charity boxes where you put a penny in and you know, the, the, yeah. the, the white with flames on. For oh, sake, no. Johnny, what's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> yeah, have you seen them, Carl? No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, they're nasty. Look. Johnny, write in. Tell us what you think, but I'm telling you, mate, they're... I'm, they're I'm, how many staff have you got in there now, then, uh, Blake? Yeah, how many so in each shop? I've got three. I've got three <laughs> chairs in each shop because it's only village locations. But then, then the 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 you know the 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 expenses are kept really quite low because I'm in villages rather than in towns. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, makes, it makes a huge difference to the cost. It's far more cost effective, in my opinion. Yes, you yeah. don't get. I haven't got the capacity to have five, six, seven, eight staff in my, in each shop, but then I'm not paying anything like the kind of rents that you would pay in a, in a town or a city centre either. Yeah, I, I think he's great, you know, and I think COVID has, has pushed us that way as well. And we, we've seen Absolutely. all the troubles that 
city centre locations have had and, you know, overheads owing rent and everything else. You know, I think you've got a plan. We, we're exactly the same. You know, we've gone for freeholds premises. We don't rent any. So we, we've yeah. gone down that route as well. So take my hat off to you as well. And especially do need Tim Kobe, mate. So wish you all the success in the world. I don't, I don't need, to, I don't think you need luck because you, you're great at your job and it's great to see you uh, being successful. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Gary. Always, Carl. Um, I think what we'll do is, um, which is not a work thing, but I'll organise an evening in, uh, I'll meet you all halfway, Barnsley. Um, <laughs> but for you, Michael, five, and maybe Jake, the guys that didn't do that salon, we'll make all them jealous and I'll take you all out for a really nice meal in Barnsley. Yeah, my favourite Indian good. restaurant, which you've been to. And then I we'll have a night on the, yeah. on the tiles and uh, we'll stay over in Barnsley, which will be really nice and talk yeah, about what's going to happen next year. Um, Carl, great to have you on, mate. You, you've been absolutely amazing for me in your time with Wall and I'm sure that's going to continue as long as you want it to continue because you're a top pro. Blake's grooming looks fantastic. Two shops now, you know, from when I first met you, from where you were working to where you've gone through and the ups and downs in, 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 you know, what we've all gone through. But great to see you now having two shops there. True professional, always immaculate and uh, an absolutely top guy to work with. So it's been great to have you on Barber's Arms, mate. I'm glad you've come on. I know you've been ill this week, uh, but that just shows you what a pro you are. All the best, pal. Have a great weekend. Thank you very and, much. Uh, I'll be in touch and we'll, we'll hopefully try and get a beer. I say Barnsley. Um, second home is Brighton. I love it down in Brighton. Um, yeah. Obviously, because me and Blakey swing both ways. Have a great weekend, mate. <laughs> Will do. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Carl, it's been a pleasure, mate. Lovely to see you. Hope to have a beer with you soon, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers, Gary. See you soon. Cheers. See, see you later, mate. Bye-bye. Lovely, oh. lovely shop. Nice shop. Nice kid. Just a pro. Never had any minutes trouble with him in, in his 16 years. Shit, jumps on shovel. An absolute top pro. Can't can't fault the kid. You know, anybody yeah. who wants anybody who wants to be with a top brand, this is where Blakey could earn some money. So listen, Carl, to this. Anybody who wants to be with a top brand, go and spend a day with Carl and let, ask him loads of questions. How have you managed to stay at Wall for 16 years still? What's the secret? Because it's hard, I'm not easy to work with. I'm very demanding, very strict, and very top level at all times. For him to be and have that longevity with us, it's a bit like relating it to a football. You know, it's like Alex Ferguson. You know, you stay at a, at a top club, player or manager, because you're successful. Simple as he's been successful. Yeah, and you know what? It, it shows in. His work ethic and everything else, I know, but, you know, moving on and, and getting his, his business as well. It's quite easy to, you know, jump on and, and work for other companies and everything else. But you've got to be able to earn it as well, or your business has got to be able to earn it. We've talked about this in the past. Can your business make money while you're not there? And that's the, the true test. Uh, and when you've got everything in place, and I'm sure uh, Carl's done Exactly that, and he's, he's successful already. Uh, it shows, doesn't it? But he's got great taste and, and a good a good work ethic. So, you know, love his work and love his, his place as well. Uh, is, is, are they, I never asked him that. Are they both based in Brighton? Is that where he is? Yeah, I think they're about seven miles from each other, something like that. He's got his yeah. daughter involved now. He does the right thing. I saw him at Christmas, not last year, maybe last year. He bought his daughter a nice car. He just does the right thing. He's just a real top guy. One of, yeah. one, of, one, of, one of my, you know, you look at your family and then I look at some of the wall team, but the older wall teams for me, your fives, your Michael Damianos, your Cal Blakes, they're not teammates, they're family. Yeah. They, I, I can't say anymore. I do hope for any of them. Uh, just on, I know we're not doing product reviews this week, but somebody sent me a bunch of pencils and there were kind of blue pencils. I don't know if anybody can see what this one says. I've got this one. I don't know if you can see that, Gaz. No. What's this he say? Try not to shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that directed at you, was he, for some reason? Uh, this next one is uh, arseholes to it. And then there's, there's, there's a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll fetch two on a week. Um, <laughs> they, were, they were quite nice. 
<laughs> that, that, that's quite good. That, that's quite good uh, advice if you're going on stage. That is just before you go on, try not to shit yourself. So that's uh, fair advice if I've ever heard any. No. I'm not. I'd. Um, I'm not. I'd to have that team talk with anybody, to be fair. <laughs> but um, well done, Blakey. Good. Good interview. Good start tonight. Uh, Desperado's going down well. Uh, what was the interference at the background? Now that's going to be two things. You're in a bar, and Manuel just come and said, "Do you want a drink?" Or your father has walked in <laughs> in an area where he shouldn't have done. I hope our kids on another beer. Which is it? <laughs> no, no. It was actually, and I'm doing it from. Uh, from our, our tennis in, in front of the house, well, by the side of the house and set up and everybody else's family's inside. And a guy, uh, you can't, I couldn't write this, a guy who's one of our neighbours has just come past walking his dog and asked me if I want to buy it. <laughs> he's carrying, he says, he's got a bottle and two glasses and brought me round. He says, hey, I'll buy, he's a Blackpool fan. His name's Peter. Peter, if you're listening, and he's just, come to, he's just come to the front gate and said, are we having a drink? <laughs> well, look, Gary, my, hello, Peter. My dad's getting really busy for next year. I got my first flights booked, two lots of flights booked today. So I'm flying out to Chicago on the 10, 9th of um, January. And then we fly out to Bologna in Italy on the 10th of March. So it was really exciting to get your first two flights. I've got my new passport. And that's all exciting stuff. Uh, but I want you to put this in the diary. I think uh, we should have a planning meeting for Baba's Arms and we should have three days uh, down there in Spain at your villa. Oh, yeah, definitely. We'll get, well, we could have we could have done it this week, couldn't we? If we'd have planned it better and you you were going to have a couple of days off, we could have done it from here anyway, couldn't we? So, and Trevor, I'm Let's sure... Let's hope that Zoom's still... Oh, no, keep him where he is. Let's hope that Zoom's still working for Trevor. Trevor, you join us on Zoom. You don't want to be travelling all the way from Australia for three or four days with me and Gaz in Orla Buenos Dias. <laughs> Come on, that will be in. All right, Trev, you bollocks as well. <laughs> no, I, feel, I, feel, I really feel for Trevor. But I'll be, all, all our guests out there, all our viewers, Trevor's stuck in Australia. He's still not allowed to travel. They're just about opening up, I think, to travel across uh, state borders. So... He's not seen his family or anybody, so we're really feeling for, for all the guys down in Australia at the moment in Adelaide that can't travel. So sooner Sorry. rather, than, yeah, sooner rather than later, we, we've got to get together and hopefully he'll be allowed to travel in 2022. So with a bit of fingers crossed, Trev, you, we'll we'll have a pint soon, mate. Oh, well, if he can travel, he'll be out of the traps like Linford Christie man is bit in his shorts. He'll be straight <laughs> off, bang away it goes. Um, but the yeah, fan is out there anyway. It's just like the, you get three cases and you can't travel from state to state. So um, it'd be nice for Trev to get out, especially if you could come out to uh, Spain. But don't feel too sorry for him, guys, because in Australia, I mean, they've got 27 degrees. They're coming into their springtime and um, they're getting ready for their really hot. Well, while we're freezing and depressed in that dark, dark morning and stuff. Trev will be messaging us and he'll be having them conversations with us where it's like 35 degrees. He sat around his pool. Uh, well, don't feel too sorry for him. It's not all bad, guys, is it? No, 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 not at all. And can I just say, uh, Jackie Hulian, she's she's watching us tonight and quite a few others. Uh, give all our love. Jackie, I'll phone you tomorrow. Um, not back until Monday. So, Jackie, all our love. And Ross, we had a great night out. We missed Jackie at the salon, but we had a great night with uh, with Ross and a couple of other guys out there. So while you were while you went missing with your team, so we had a fantastic well, night. Let's just clear this one up, guys. I didn't go that missing for that much, right? I had a flat tire and a phone Mercedes. They came out and they did the tire. While I'm having the tire fitted, the bar was just opening. I went in and I drank in pint for pint for about half an hour, which were about four pints we had. I went upstairs, got a shower, and I went around the corner for something to eat. I came back, I was so tired, and he's still in the bar, bear in mind. And so it set the pace. So if you ever watch pace, pace setters, when they're doing like N800 metres, this is him. But he carries on till end of race. <laughs> were, you, were you a scouse mate? What were you a scouse mate called? Oh, Johnny Rickraft from LA, brilliant. And Robbie from down south as well. So uh, they we both had, a good had team bobs. Up. They both yeah. had bob haircuts. Something wrong with them, I know, brilliant. We had a great right. weekend. 
let's get on with enough for our banter. Uh, coming up now, we have our second visitor here on episode 73 in conjunction with Wall UK and the British Barbers Association here on October the 29th. Uh, joining us now for the first time, we have Sam Bennett, who is Head of Sales for Near Cut. Sam, how are you, brother? How are you doing? Nice, Steve. Now you done. Sam. Is Sam, was he there? He was there, um, but we've just lost him for a second. Uh, Sam's going to be... Oh, here we go. Sam, how are you Hello. doing, man? So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, listen, you're OK. Oh, he's even got his own T-shirt on again. Anybody who wears a T-shirt on Barbara's arms have to send me and Gaz one. Medium for me, double XL for Gaz. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sam, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, on the show. It's first time Thank you. How are you, sir? Yeah, really good. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Made up. I, I, think, I think we can still hear you. I think we've lost uh, video on there, but it's not, not a problem. We'll carry on regardless as we true professionals we are. Sam, for, for our... There we go. Oh, yeah, there you go. For, for not very good with that, technology, apparently. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be saying that when you're running a when you're running a booking app. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, Sam, for all our all our viewers out there who are not um, who are not familiar with uh, Nearcut, you're a household name within the industry now. Anyway, hey, we've had thank you. we've had we've had Booksy on already as a, as a guest. So just give us a roundup quickly of who you are, what you are, where you're from, and how long you've been with the company. Uh, so I'm from a little town called Newark, in between Nottingham and Lincoln. Um, been with Nearcut for six years, which is pretty much when it started. It was officially built before that, but it was kind of on the shelf, just serving a handful of customers, literally a handful of customers. Um, and then I joined, and yeah, we've we've kind of grown from there. Um, I'm head of sales. I'm a partner in the business, and yeah, I'm really really proud. We're doing all right. Hi, Sam. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm made up honest. Hi, Sam. Sam is short. Um, just wanted to go through a few questions. Obviously, um, I'd like a little bit of background story where Near Cut started. And obviously, I think for any, it's like with our brand and, and the BBA, there's so many brands to choose from, but especially with booking systems, there's quite a few brands now to, to choose from. So it'd be nice to hear the background story and what, what's your difference. Um, but my first question to you is, and then we can go into some of those questions, is so head of sales for your cup, what's the best part of your job? Uh, customer feedback. Wow. Well, easily. It's, well, I've never, well, I've, I've been around, I've done a lot of different things in my time. Um, and I've never, ever known an army like it. It's unbelievable, really. Um, the, yeah, proper militant. It's yeah, it's incredible. Never ever known anything like it. Go on, Sam. I was just gonna say. So tell tell the viewers what what's the growth? What what you've been there six years, but what's the growth in Nearco? When did when did it start? What you know? How long's it been going? Well, and what what's the kind of you know success story? Um, so twenty sixteen, it probably kicked off. It was built in twenty eleven originally. Um, but the, the guy who built it, the main founder, um, the brains behind it all, um, he was 15 and he built it for his barber who was struggling, um, the other co-founder. And essentially it worked. It turned his business around. And then from there, he <clears throat> kind of told a few industry friends about it, people that, you know, you guys will probably know. Um, but it was kind of left there. The, the founder was busy in school and the <laughs> other one was... Yeah, literally. I mean, 15 years old. I mean, got handed to him. Um, and then the other founder was busy running a barbershop. So nothing could really happen at that stage. You know, it wasn't a business. It was, you know, just a little solution for, for a handful of people. Um, and that's the way it went. So from 2016, me and um, the, the founder that actually built the software um, tried a different project. And it didn't really work out. It was basically going to be a rival to Just Eat, would you believe? But yeah, uh, I mean, picky battles and all that. So um, we need a lot more money that we can get hold of. So that didn't work out. And I said, look, you know, you mentioned this before. I've got really nothing to do at the moment. You know, would you mind me coming on board and, and taking that to the next level? It's, you know, it's already working for a small number of people. Let's make that number of people bigger. And, 
yeah, one thing led to another. And here we are six years later with, you know, two and a half thousand clients, 2.3 million people in, in the UK have used it. And um, yeah, all without a penny of investment, we've done, we've done it all of us, all ourselves. Um, and we've grown from being one slash two people to uh, 25. Um, Again, without without any fun financial backing, which we're incredibly proud of, because that obviously means we can keep the product really good and honest without being kind of having to be lauded over by you know people that are demanding their money back, demanding return on investment. Like, we're not about that. We're all about reinvesting and making everything better for for the people that use it and being fair on price at the same time. Fantastic. I mean, what a story. I, I did know a little bit of the story, but I didn't know Thank the timelines on it, and I didn't know. The schoolboy bit either. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's you know, genius. total respect to you and the guys out there, uh, you know, Thanks when you, much. You, you took a punt on this. Now, the, the, turning point, the turning point in your um, sector or, or, or our sector or, or, and, and your business must have been obviously the COVID thing mm-hmm. where everybody, had, you know, there was no walk in trade. Everybody had to go to some sort of system, not saying they had to have a booking system, but they yeah. use either queuing outside in the rain until your turn came or <laughs> yeah. you, took, you, took, you took on a, uh, a booking system. and It was one or the other. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, I was one of those kicking... I'm, I'm old school, you know. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not quite as old as, as Simon, but, you know, I'm, I'm near that age group. But mm-hmm. I, I actually had to be brought to the table kicking and screaming. And we did try and... Uh, my brother in the business, we did try mm-hmm. and bring it. Um, to our clients a few years ago, and we, we oh, okay. my clients weren't weren't too fussy, and we, we tried to yeah. ask their opinion, and so we didn't. But we we almost got forced to do this, and I will. I'm yeah. not saying it just because you're on the show, but we did go to Nico, and we were really <laughs> fantastic. You know, we've, you. we've had a great great experience with that, and you've I'm got so some. Pleased. You know, it, it's. I like the one thing I will say is you don't stand on your laurels. You're constantly um, evolving the business, and you're adding new new bits and bobs. You know the review bit. You're bringing out a new payment system as well, which we just taken a new EPOS system. And I, I, when I spoke to Martin, I was ready throttling because he's the best you, there is as well. Yeah, you just you've, you just, you've got a good one in mind. He's yeah, yeah. So. Um, He's so what, what's new? What's new for Nico? How are you going to build and, and progress the business then? I think you've done most of the talking for me there. Uh, so card machines are here; they're live, and so that's going to be a big one. Not only because it's competitive against the people that most barber shops and salons use, which is um, Sum Up, Square, Izettle, typically speaking. Um, so it's going to be the pretty much the same kind of price as those, but. What it's going to do over and above that is it's going to link in with your booking system as well, just making the admin side easier, making it easier for your accountant, and all just generally make it a bit more sense than having two isolated systems that you have to then marry up manually. So that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, we build branded apps, which I believe you have one from us um, for, for Rogers. We've then expanded into different markets. So we've got France, Germany. We're going to start in the USA as well soon. Um, and well, to be honest, our development list for things that are actually going to be built, whether they're small or big, is, is over 300 long. So there's there's quite a lot going on. Yeah, you might not see or appreciate it all, but everything will go some way to help it or make it better, quicker, more stable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, can you imagine if you work with me, you'd be a multimillionaire. <laughs> We can work with you. We've yeah, I'll have that conversation with you after maybe. But yeah, there's an opportunity there. So Sam, I'm gonna ask you a real tough question here. I'm gonna put oh, you yeah? on the spot. Go if you it. could work with one client, one barber, well hairdresser, whichever, but mm-hmm. could work with one person out of the industry in the world that you've not got currently, who would that who would you love to have on your books? Um, hard to choose one, obviously. And I like to treat all of our clients the same. It doesn't matter whether they're one chair no one's ever heard of or the biggest chain that is in the world, like everyone gets treated the same. Um, so I like to get in, that in there straight away. But as for names I'd like to see on our books, 
the likes of Josh LaMonica, Alan Beek, Ryan Cullen, people we don't have, those sorts of guys. Was know, the main one always... the one? Ah, oh, God. Uh, well, I know my chances with one of them are slim to none. Let's go Josh LaMonica. He's a cool guy. He's a nice guy. I, th- I think no, I think I, I think I think a lot of the a lot of people as well. People buy off people, don't. Yeah, people buy people. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, uh, you know, it, it, you have a relationship. We went through all the list, you know, with all the Adrian had a, a bit of a, a say in, you know, he he did all this, the the uh, the footwork, but at the end of the day, we mm-hmm. had to agree, and it's about the experience and how people treat you. So, and I yeah, think that goes with our, our industry anyway. <laughs> so it's. Uh, yeah. It's a people thing, isn't it? So Definitely. I will say the technical backup is great as well. We've we've never had any problems whatsoever. Thank so you. We've got Oxford say. Oxford Uni on our development side. So yeah, if you want to pick the best, we've got them. They're awesome. Perfect. Now I think that's. I think looking at the background as well, the the kind of like where you've started and the the invention. I mean. I'm fascinated sometimes when I watch those programs or if you're on YouTube and you see teenagers from school or become millionaires before they leave school. Yeah. Um, and they spend stuff like this. You know, this is kind of that kind of story. Um, yeah. I'm not yeah. He's a millionaire, so don't start stalking the kid. <laughs> but I the idea itself <laughs> and the barber saying that that would be really good for me or can you help me with this? And, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I, 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 when I, I, one of my staff I work with, his son is a genius. He just writes yeah. the programs. You know, he's just like fourteen it's years old. Good money Just unbelievable. I like that you're having a glass of wine and a beer. I mean, that's my chaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like. I mean, me and Gaz have a we had, we had one at Salon actually. He said, "Do you want a chaser with that?" I said, "Yeah, I'll have another pint straight away." I'd usually have a, I'd usually have a Remy XO, but I'm not feeling so flush at the moment. <laughs> so it's cheap wine. What 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 are you drinking tonight, Sam? Anyway, what's your uh, tip? Hobgoblin. Oh, Gold. lovely. Um, really, really good. And then the uh, an Italian white. Oh, it's very what, good. You're based in where, Sam? Where Where do you live? Um, it's a little market town called Newark. Um, it's right in the oh, middle yeah. of Lincoln and Nottingham, East Midlands. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely. Do, nice. do you know what? Do you know what? I need to. I need you to get on to. I need you to get him on the obgoblin. I sent him a load of obgoblin. Oh, oh we should have been drinking That's obgoblin on that. <laughs> and um, he wouldn't drink. He's too strong for him. He's too strong for these northern lads, isn't he? So Sam, moving forward again, you know, like looking at the business as well. I'm not having that obgoblin cheese. It tastes like a car. <laughs> um. What's the what's the what's the future growth plans? Um, you know what, what's the plan for Near Cup? How are you going to take the, the business further forward? Do you look for investments? Are you getting new programmers coming in? You know what what's the what's the the next five six years looking for for Near Cup? Um, so rapid growth in terms of hiring. Um, we invest pretty much every penny we've got into people. We don't post profits. Um, we, we 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 reinvest everything into the into the product and into the team behind the product. Um, as for as for our growth plan growth plans, apart from hiring people, it's it's diversifying diversifying into new markets. So, particularly in the barbering world, it's going to be France, Germany, the rest of Europe. But those two are going to lead the way. Um, but of course, covering everywhere else. And then now we're going to start attacking the USA as well. Asia, we've not even talked about. A bit of a different beast. We do have a, a client or two over there, but it seems all that, all the more tricky. So, uh, yeah, it's doing that. But because we're so focused on barbering and barbering only, um, like you won't find anyone that isn't a barber using Nearcut. We do have other brands which they will use, and it's you know similar, all the same team with a bit of overlapping behind. Nearcut is for barbering. So that's all Nearcut will ever be. It's... We know our niche, we know it well, and compared to our competition, they're dealing with dog grooming, PTs, and salons and nail salons and aesthetics, and you, you know, you name it. Anyone that does bookings, they're dealing with. We stick to the niche that we know, and that's barbering. That's big enough, and we would rather be the absolute experts in that market than 
spread ourselves too thin and then risk not being at the top of our game. So if anybody are unsure about that, guys, you're in it first year on Barber's Arms here on episode 73, that Nick do specialise just in barbering. So there's no salons, there's no, uh, like you just said, any, any dog parlouring or, or um, any other kind of service industry that would, would involve this kind of like any cutting air whatsoever. It's just barbering that you guys do, which is something I didn't know until tonight. That I didn't know you guys just concentrate like on barbering. So we, we- we do have other brands for other things, but we have different people that kind of chip in behind the scenes. But Nearcut is our is our main business, the flagship business, if you will. And you know, we we like to play to our strengths. We know that talk, that it, talking to that. Barbering. Where's the HQ then? Where where's the the hub? Where's the center? So everyone's remote. Absolutely everyone. There there there, there is no HQ as such. Um, we did have a small office in Berlin, but with COVID, we kind of dismantled that and everyone started working at the moment you know it's just as well really we do have a large portion of our sales team in 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 and around newark people that i know just the way i've grown up with we've, we've all been sales people like my friends group i mean so it's kind of worked out quite nicely really that is fairly incestuous we've got a lot of people we know and a lot of people we know through people we know um but it keeps the trust there and it keeps the morale there and yeah, one thing that we've all got in common is that it's, but how, how it's a very happy place that? to be. How do you recruit? Do you do you do, do you do you ever do any? I know it's a well established brand now, like you said, two and a half thousand people using it, two million people have used it in the UK. But do you cold call? Do you just go into a barbershop sometimes and ask them, do you use a booking system? And and if you do so, which one is it? Or if you're not, can we show you ours? Or do you advertise and then get leads and then go in? How, how's it work? Um thinking cautiously who's watching this uh, <laughs> tricks of the trade and all that um a bit of a mix of everything the one thing we don't do is people on the road because it's too unproductive it's too high cost um luckily being you know one of the main let's say two brands that people tend to think of when they use uh, when they're looking to use a booking system we don't have to work too hard to make people Kind of know who we are. Not saying that everyone knows who we are. That's absolutely not true. But we do have a bit of a presence in most parts of the country, and towns, and cities, and villages, and whatever. So that help that helps massively through organic growth. Um, so I'd say a bit of a mix of everything you said, but we don't do anything on the road. Um, it's mostly digital. We don't pick up the phone too often because all we're doing is annoying them. If I rang you on, I don't know, let's say a Friday afternoon when you stack busy, taking you off the off the floor to answer a sales call isn't really the best foot to get off on. So we we use a few more um, less aggressive methods, let's say. Do, do you know what? Very hands think, off. Think, with no pressure. I think, I think you've just brought up something that I was going to ask you anyway. Um, you know, exactly that answering the phone, you know, the, the, the taking the, the plus points of taking a booking app, yeah. you know, cuts down on answering the phone. You, you know, yeah. as long as you talk, and educate your clients in booking, how to use it, mm-hmm. get them registered. It yeah. makes life a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> you know, you know, cancellation watch and everything else. Yeah. I, know, I, I know what we pay. I know what our charges are. I know, you know, what it costs to set up. What's, I, you know, could you give us some figures for viewers out there, both prospective viewers, bearing in mind we have, you know, between 50 and 100,000 viewers every week. Uh, you know, <laughs> what, what your average charges? Do you, do you have a charging scale? What do you, how do you work that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So um, we do charge by the barber because the barber is where it takes up the cost. It's service and it's server um, server usage. So we do tend to charge by the barber, but we're really, really fair. So firstly, everyone will get three months free, whether you're big, small, it doesn't matter who you are. You get three months totally free. Make sure you like it. Make sure you're invested into it. If you are, great. If you're not, that's fine. You don't pay as a penny. There's nothing to sell unless you have your own app. Um, but you don't need that anyway. It's just a nice to have. So three months free to start with. There's no contracts as such. It's just 30 days rolling. But if you decided after your three months free trial, it's not really for you, we just shake hands on that. That's the end of it. Um, no, no money would exchange hands. After that, the average is around about, I don't know, 50 quid a month. But what we what we're about is look, 
one of the one of the big problems we've always faced is that people just see it as another bill, and kind of rightly so. You know, it's it, it's something that goes out of your bank rather than than in in the sense of should I use Nick or should I use a free system or should I use one of the others? But the way that I see it, knowing what I know, being on this side of of the uh, of the argument is it's an investment. Like you use a piece of software, like you mentioned, like it means you're not answering the phone all day, every day. More than 50% of the appointments made when you've got a booking system are made outside of your opening hours. So, you know, if you put that into context of not having a booking system, more than half of your customers are going to be bothering you when you're at home with your kids and your wife and your husband or whatever. And they're going to be messing you and they won't care what time it is. If it's midnight, then they're not bothered. They just want them, they just want the appointment. And a lot of people watching would have, of course, experienced that. So putting in a booking system is, is an investment. Um, and you mentioned cancellation watch. I mean, that alone, we know that that will make, on average, people around about £70 a month. And on average, we charge less than that. So as long as you can use at least that one feature, forgetting everything else, even just, just in isolation, that one feature is going to make you more profitable using Nearcut than not having Nearcut. And it's my job to make as much of the industry as I can realise you know, with the right advice, you know, this this is really designed to, to pay you more than you are. We always say our, our tagline is such, but Nearcut is designed to give you the two things we all want, money and time. If What's we can do that, that, everyone's happy. Sorry, Simon, say again total amount of staff that you have like designers or working on the IT side sales what, what, how many staff do you have in total um, about, about 25 wow about 25 yeah one or two. Uh, do, do, do you know what I, you know I really like you know you know this perspective for guys out there who own this I can look at all six shops in advance yeah. daily weekly monthly but not only that it gives me what breakdown of what the barber's earning what what the shops yeah. are earning so you've got it at your think. I'm in Spain now. I've done an end of day. You can have a look at, you know, yeah. and it's it, it, it's it's there at your fingertips. It's fantastic, you know. So thank you. It, thank the, you. The other things that the 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 other parts of the app that it gives you, it's not just a booking app. It's a tool to run your business as yeah, well. Yeah, proper so. proper management system. Like it's, yeah. we, we always say booking system, but I think that's because we're always in, always in the, the rhythm or habit of saying booking system, you know, back from when it began. And that's kind of the terminology most people use. But in reality, it's, it, it's a hell of a lot more than that if you want it to be. It's, yeah. It can, do do you some, guys go it can to run salon? the show for you. Say did, again? you did you go to Salon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. So I, was in, I was in Greece, but... Yeah, we we had a we had a good number there, and yeah, really good, really really good. Good, I'm glad you went because we think did it's it. Important. We did it for our sister company, which is booking beautiful. Like Nick got tagged along, but it was mainly about our, our sister company, which is for the hair and beauty aesthetics, that kind of thing. Booking beautiful, that's cool. Yeah, I would say. Booking beautiful. Book in beautiful. Three words. I yeah. like it. So that was your piece of Actually, <laughs> so I will take some credit. Thank you. <laughs> um, just quick just quickly before we go and i know time's going on it's great for you give us uh I'm, I'm guessing you'd be in the pub usually anyway it's great you're giving us time tonight um oh my pleasure um, thank you we really we really appreciate that um from um you know from a company point of view um it's you know there's so many benefits to it but also um from an employer point of view it, it's great but it's not just that is it either it's for those those barbers who are on their own or even you know um mobile or whatever, whatever it is it's it's a great app for, for everything as well for everybody so it, it, it's not just it's not just the big companies that, you know we've got no, no, no. i've spoke i spoke to for to a few people who's really really changed the way they work but they had the, the feeling that, oh, I'm not big enough to have a booking app, you know, or, you know, they'd still yeah, the IP or whatever. It just makes everything so much easier, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it really does. Um, I always say it's like having, I mean, again, no matter what, what the size of your business, one chair. In fact, if you're a one chair shop, I think it's more important than if you're a 10 chair shop because you've got no one to split, split the workload with. If you're 10 people, then you have. And, you know, those queues of, let's say, 10, 20 people, they're not so bad because you've got 10 shares to split that workload amongst. 
that if you're a one chair shop and you're in demand, it must be really, really hard to be walk-ins only because yeah. you've got the absolute most pressure that you could have. So what I always say, having a booking system is like having a receptionist, a business analyst, a marketing expert, a salesperson, an accountant, probably a couple of other things as well, all working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just picking up all of the stuff that you don't really want to or you can't, working everything out, giving you the results back, telling you how well everything's performing, giving you a real insight into, into your business and things like saving cancellations and all of those sorts of things that, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. And, of course, the benefit of appointments is people will pay more for the convenience. It's not about doing the most amount of cuts. It's, well, yeah, some people it is, but it's, it's about earning, earning your worth and not working too hard for it. Work on the business rather than in it. Yeah. Do you, find, do you guys use it like we all do as, as brands as well? So using influencers, do you, do you have influencers that work for near cut in the industry, in the barbering industry that promote the brand yeah. to help you get new barbers coming on? So we... <laughs> like we were, we've been really mindful and we've had the conversation probably half a dozen times should we look at going down the ambassador route and we've always decided no and one of the main reasons for that is because we've got more than a dozen um, ambassadors or, or previous ambassadors to another company of a booking system that now, now use our system and that's kind of not through trying that's just through failure on one side and Sometimes the grass is greener, you know, not always, but sometimes it is. So we didn't really want to make that mistake. We're not, we're not so egotistical thinking, you know, no one's ever going to leave near cut because that'd be ridiculous. And if they did, we've kind of got egg on our face as, as much as people that were previous ambassadors for another company. Um, so I kind of, we've kind of done it out of not wanting to set ourselves up for a fail. Uh, and also because everyone is such a great ambassador of Nearco Life, you see much in the in the Facebook groups over the years. It's there's just so much positivity from everyone. Like to favour one person over another, well, I find it hard to to justify as a business. Why would we do that? Because the person or the people that you're not giving that ambassadorship to are going to feel let down in some way. They're not going to feel as positive because you know the person up the street has been given an ambassadorship and it's right for some businesses i just i just don't think it's right for ours everyone is so so good to us so we like to keep everyone treated the same and you know so far so good most of our business still comes from referrals great great attitude and great uh, you know very clever Take we're just really you. nice we're just really nice and one thing <laughs> sorry i don't want to keep you but the one thing that we that i'm really proud of that i can say that we do is if we don't think something is right for one of our clients then we will we'll talk them out of it like so many people come to me and say oh i want my own app i want my own app I'm like well you can have one is that the right thing to do as a business for you right now but a lot of it during covid when they weren't earning so you want to spend a couple of hundred quid building that yeah still a good price for what you get but right now is this the time to do it do you want to spend an extra couple of hundred quid 20 pound a month when no one's coming through the door, it's, it's just hold off. It's still going to be there if you do want it in a, in a little while's time. Just, you know, we try and put ourselves in their shoes and, you know, being, being honest and giving genuine advice as to what we would do if that we were them is, is what we breed kind of inside and out. And honestly, yes, it might not earn us as much as we could, but that's not what it's about. It's, I don't think you should put the, the finances first. You put the customers first and the rest will come. I think, guys, we'll have to put Fruit Mill on some quick-fire questions to see what uh, we, we, we've had enough uh, hearing about near cut now, how good they are, how honourable they are. They don't fuck anybody over. They're, they're the best company to work with. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. I think I've done some PR for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to do some quick-fire questions on you. So what's your favourite food? Um, roast dinner. Prime rib. The good stuff. Roast dinner. Right. I'll be getting that this Sunday, guys, will you? Uh, what's your favourite drink? If I was in the pub, Guinness. If I was at home, a good brandy, Remy. 
Uh, what's your favourite music? Rolling Stones. And what's your favourite destination? Where's the place that you said, if you got one last holiday, this is it. This is the place I love to be. Vegas. <laughs> yes, oh. baby. So it's all building up a nice theme, this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not sure he's got a roast dinner in Vegas, though. <laughs> They've got nope. a lot of prime rib there. I'm happy with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like the prime rib, but uh, they do. <laughs> you're not going to get a dinner in my car and eat these this weekend. Um, Sam, if you could do all this with one person, past or present, who would you like to have a night? Who would be your ideal dinner date? Who would you like to have a couple of hours with over a table? Who would it be? It'd be more than a couple of hours, but uh, Mick Jagger. Okay. Or Marilyn Munro. Uh, my wife won't appreciate it. Uh, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. <laughs> Speak with that. <laughs> Edit that. Hey, listen, you can have fans <laughs> about ghosts. It's, it's okay. We, it's um, come out I'm with not where to would. Sam, great to have the insight tonight on uh, Near Thank Coach. Thank you. I think you guys have got a great, unique story there from 20, obviously 2011, but 2016 Thank when you were uh, kind of born and, and the, the how it came about from a barber to a guy, who, a young kid who was still at school to... Yeah. Right. Do you gain all the bit of sales manager, head of sales and sales director? Great story, great products. I'm sure lots Thank of bars out there. Two and a half thousand bars out there already using near cut. So congratulations to the brand. Before I pass you on to Gaz, Sam Bennett, head of sales for near cut. He's having a fantastic roast dinner. He's doing all this in Las Vegas. He's having a pint of Guinness while he's doing it. He's listening to some uh, um, Rolling Stones music. And he's having all this with a very fantastic Mick Jagger. Uh, Sam, you. been great to have you on Barber's Arms, mate. Uh, I'll pass Cheers, you Simon. All the best to you. And uh, Thank you. Let's, let's talk in the near future. Yeah, perfect. I've got something for you. I'll be in touch. <laughs> So, uh, Sam, it's been great having you on, mate. Uh, Thank you, Gary. I knew you'd be a great guest and a great insight into the company. We'll have <laughs> a pint very soon, my friend, hopefully. And yeah, we'll, absolutely. Uh, we'll meet up. We'll have Thanks for coming more. on and giving you time, mate. My pleasure. Thank you so much. See, See you later. Top guy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Great insight, that, guys. I, 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 I was never aware that Nia Cut started off by a young kid. Well, not a young kid, but a teenager who was a computer expert. Um, see, I, I swear that one. Sometimes people say a computer geek, uh, a computer expert. Um, and I love stories like that. And then you get to a person like Sam. And if you ever watch the uh, social media film the, about Facebook, um, just how that started. It, it, it just reminds me of a small version of that. You know, dedicated just to barbers. You're just a barber shops, Rogers. You've got it. So that that should show that running across the five units is probably a fantastic product. I, I know there's other brands out there, and I'm not endorsing Nico. I'm just saying the interviewee tonight told us his story, and it, I thought it was a great story um, for that to come out. Great. Really enjoyed yeah. that. Well done, Sam Bennett. Yeah, and do you know what? As well, it's the, the, you know, keep it real. But the 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 backup and the technical stuff's great. You know, I can't fault them at all. But it's, um, you know, I didn't know that the the the, um, the schoolboy side of it either. To be honest, I knew the, a bit of the story, but not, obviously not all of it. But it's, um, I think, I think from a, a company like that, and I mean, COVID, you know, there is you have to have a bit of luck in business sometimes as well, don't you? You know. And, to be funneled down that route uh, at, at that point, uh, you know, whether we'd still be with an appointment uh, app, I don't know if, if COVID hadn't happened. I, you know, we don't know what had happened in the future, but, you know, you have to make your own look as well. And it's a great, but it's a great, great product. So it's one of them, isn't it? You know, uh, but a nice value. Good, good, uh, good story. Yeah, yeah, really good. And it, <laughs> you just don't know what you're getting on the show. And we've said it before. When you see, you, you think you know somebody or you know a brand and then they actually talk the story through and give you the beginnings and then sometimes very humble beginnings. It's, uh, it's brilliant how, how these, uh, these stories pan out, don't they, when, when we have them on as guests. And I love it. Yeah. That's, that's all. In beer and wine together at the same time, I know I'm on it. That's well, when I'm like, I want to like, I'm on it tonight. So fair play to the kid. He had a he had a glass of wine and he, he was chasing it with a what's the called hog goblin, whatever shite it is, big ball of that tar. 
He needed the wine to speed it up for him. <laughs> He's our type of people, don't we know it anyway? So that's, that's what you do to people. That's what you do to people. Guys, great to have you all back. I have to say, and I'm going to be really honest, and yeah, it took me uh, 10 days to get over Salon International. Um, luckily, I didn't have any seminars and stuff, but I've done lots of work. And I, I actually travelled down to RHQ uh, on Tuesday. Um, was it Monday night I went down? Yeah, Monday night for all day Tuesday. Um, so, you know, it's took me a week to get over it. So we are getting back to normal. It's going to take some of us a, a bit longer than others um, to do that. But, you know, that I can only explain that is, you know, when you all went back for the first time in the first lockdown and everybody was like complaining that the backs were killing after the first week and the feet. Whilst I've been back doing stuff and I've done seminars, it's the first exhibition for two years. Trust me, everybody, I'm going to put my hand up. It flatlined me. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, my voice had gone. Um, I, and then I came back at weekend and I felt worse on Monday than what I did when I came back from Salon. So it took me a full week and a half, 10 days to get over it. Feel great. Feel well done. Well done to all the guys uh, at Wall. Well done to the guests tonight, Carl Blake, fantastic, super pro, and Sam Bennett from uh, Neocourt. Really enjoyed having you on episode 73. I want to leave it to the amigo the gringo out in Spain, enjoying himself, sunning himself, sat on his sun lounger with a little bowl of rice that's out of him with a flannel like Ray Winston on the sexy beast, putting on his balls every five minutes because it's baking hot. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Over to Gas. Um, just try and get that, what he's just said, completely out of your minds because you won't sleep tonight, the horror of it. But uh, thank you, Mr. Simon Shaw. Pleasure as always. Great to have a Friday night drink with you with some great guests. Um, I, I, you know, saw a little post today. We've had uh, more cases, not hospitalised, but we've had more cases since January. It's high since January. This thing hasn't gone away. It's caused havoc with work this week. So everybody out there, keep doing the same, the right things. Stay safe and have a great weekend. I hope you're all very busy. Back to school on Monday. Have a great weekend. See you all later. Adios. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Adios. Hola! That's Spanish! <laughs> For how do you bastard yet? <laughs> what about your neighbour? Oh. You're trying to go, get away. Get away. <laughs> get away. He's going, fancy going for a